Hello, and welcome to another episode of ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the processor's heat sink to remove the old thermal compound. Over time, these compounds do eventually wear out and dry up and crack, causing your CPU to overheat. Well, I'm going to show you how to remove the old thermal compound, apply a fresh compound to extend the life of your CPU. Here is a, a PC that I'm working on and what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to uh, remove and replace the processor in these computers. Now the processors are all different. Uh, some of them are like this where they have a latch. Uh, some of them have uh, screws on all four corners that screws the uh, heat sink down into the motherboard and you want you want to keep adequate pressure from the heat sink to the processor because the heat sink is viable to the hot, the CPU's life it dissipates the heat as you can see this is why it's got the fan on top now especially if you're going to keep these computers uh, this one here is pretty much is a pretty old one uh, this has the original DDRs. Uh, it also it's also comes out with a, the new uh, P4s and the SATA connections, but it, it's pretty much like a crossover. This one here has an AMD processor in it, and what I'm going to do is remove it and reapply grease to it, which is a, a thermal compound. It's a compound such as this one here and what it will do is you can't see the metal may feel smooth to you but in reality it's not it contains uh, things like micro fissures and uh, things like that and what you want to do is put a thermal compound uh, they got them in silicone they've got them in silver and you want a good kind that can adequately transfer the heat from the processor to the heat sink. Now over time these uh, thermal compounds will eventually wear out or dry up and crack thus preventing adequate heat transfers. So what I'm going to do here is show you how you can reapply the grease to your old PCs. The first thing you need to do is you need to remove the clamp. Now, as I've mentioned before, some of them have clamps like this. Uh, some of them has the end of the clamps here that requires a flat screwdriver to remove the, pro the clamp. Uh, this one here, I'm just going to remove the clamp. You lift it up, and as you see, it loosens the... Uh, the processor's mount. Now you want to unhook your CPU fan and then once you have it unhooked you can release the clamp. Now you have this side here which is a leverage it just hooks to one side and this side has two hooks that goes to the side and once you release it 
now you can remove the processor. Now, as you can see here, uh, it's been quite a quite some time since this had ever seen grease on it or thermal compound. And as you can see, the processor here it looks pretty dry too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean the uh, heat sink here. I've got some uh, thermal compound cleaner, and what this will do is remove the uh, old thermal compound on both the CPU and the heat sink. Now I'm going to zoom in and get, let you get a closer look uh, at the PC at the processor. Uh, as you can see, it's you know it's rather dried out, uh, just like it is here. So. Uh, to remove the processor, let me zoom back out. Uh, before you remove the processor, take notice of the orientation of the processor. Here you have the arrow. This identifies the pin number one. It also identifies the orientation that the processor must be in to sit properly into the socket. Now, if you're upgrading these processors, take note on the side of the socket here and it will tell you exactly what socket it is, such as uh, 754s, 1155s, uh, AM2s, AM3s, and you want to make sure that the motherboard also supports the type of processor you're installing. Now I will get into all that in details in another video dealing specifically with processors. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to re-grease this uh, processor and show you how to remove the processor and install a new processor. Now to remove these processors, if you look to the right, you'll see a, 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 a ZIF insert rod or a lever and what this do is they're called ZIFs they're zero insert force sockets and these are very handy because they require no tools whatsoever the lever here you just need to move the lever here to the side where it unlocks and then push up like so now the processor is now released and you can just gently grab the sides of it like so and remove the processor. Now whatever you do when you're handling these processors do not touch the pins. You got all these pins right here Again, you have the arrow down here in the bottom, which points the orientation that the processor must be in. It also identifies pin number one on these. And you need to be sure that you also have the arrow that's on the socket. That means that these arrows must match up in order for the processor to fit in this socket. Now, again, you have the, the lever here, you insert the processor and then lower it back down and it will lock it into place. Now be sure that the motherboard does support the pro new processor if you're upgrading the processor and the socket will tell you what kind it is. Then this way you'll know approximately what processor will fit in this. Now, I'm going to get my cleaning solution to clean up the processor here. And be careful when you're cleaning these not to bend the pins, otherwise you're going to have trouble putting the processor back in and you've damaged it and you will have to replace it. I now have the heat sink 
and as you get a close look at it, it's uh, whoever th this was a custom built PC, which I think somebody's actually just slapped a bunch of parts together and called it a PC. Uh, this one here, as you can see, the grease on here is rather old and dried out. Uh, what you could do is you go to electronic stores and get these uh, cleaners. And what it is, it's a uh, thermal material remover. And it's real good about removing this stuff. You also can get the uh, stuff here. Now, I got these at Radio Shack. And this is a purifier. It's called a thermal surface purifier. And this will actually clean the or prepare the heat sink for the new compound. Now, to get started, all you have to do is to open the cap. And it does have the instructions on the back. So you know exactly what you need to do. And it only takes a few seconds, anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds and stuff. And what this will do is dissolve the compound. And it don't take very much. And from the looks of it, somebody went a little crazy over the... Uh, use of the compound and it don't take very much Now once you apply it you wait about 30 to 60 seconds Once your 30 to 60 seconds are up Just take a, a paper towel or a cloth and just gently rub And you see how how easily this stuff comes off And as you can see here, this is all the crud that came off the heat sink. Now, you may have to do it a second time. And again, you just follow the same steps. Now, I use... Uh, my finger or you use a q-tip to help spread the stuff over the area that you're wanting to clean uh, be sure that you keep the uh, cap on the cleaner and you know as you can see you can a lot of that crud will come off simply without little effort now when we get down to the heat sink we're going to do the same thing to the processor and I'm going to show you some interesting stuff about these processors that will help you learn what these processors could actually do. Now, the stuff I put through a second coating. And as you can see, I got some more stuff off of it. Now you can still see the markings where the processor was, which is that's okay, uh, that's normal. The longer the processor's been there, the longer you're going to see marks and scrapes and stuff. Uh, part of this is because of the way the uh, heat sink was uh, put on the processor. And once you have it cleaned and it's dried, we can now apply the purifier, which is a neutralizer, and a cleaner, which removes all the uh, stuff from when we cleaned it. Now you just apply several drops. And then you can take something like a, a microfiber cloth. Uh, microfiber cloth, such as this one here, 
or any kind of lint-free cloth will work. I need to get me a new one, but I don't know where my other one's at. So I'm just going to have to use this one. It's not too bad. And just you just take it and clean. And now the heat sink is ready for the processor. Now with the heat sink completed and cleaned, now we need to do the processor. Now we'll do the processor the same way as we did the heat sink. We'll take the cleaner, apply a few drops, And again, we're going to let it sit for 30 to 60 seconds. Now again, we just take a paper towel or a cloth and we're going to wipe away the cleaning. Now we're going to wipe away the cleaning here and as you can see it looks almost brand new. Now on the processor these here uh, this has got uh, the metal plating on here which helps dissipate the heat. Now when you're doing these you want to make sure that you're only grabbing by the edges of the processor. You don't want to grab or hold around the, the pins because you're liable to bend them and that could be a bad thing. And again, you know, you can remove all the crud off of the processor. And there we have it. Now, let me zoom in and show you the parts of these processors and stuff. Now, every processor here has numbers identified on them. And what this does is it tells you uh, uh, details about the processor. Of its uh, caches, its L2 caches, its frequency, uh, all kinds of information and it will even tell you the socket type that it is and it tells you who it's made by. Now this one here particularly is an AMD Symphron and it gives you the model number which if you looked it up it can tell you exactly what the processor can do and what certain features that the processor has. Again you have the arrow which is the orientation it has to match up to the sockets arrow, uh, arrow. And this is basically what these processors look like. And here you have all the pins. And each processor contains information on it, which is like a serial number. Just look up the number and it'll tell you exactly what the processor can do and all the features it has. Now if you're changing the processor or upgrading it to put something faster, then make sure that the motherboard also supports the new processor. Now we're ready to reapply some new grease or thermal compound. What we need to do now is take the uh, purifier and apply it to the processor to remove the cleaning solution. Again, just use a microfiber or a lint-free cloth and gently rub the processor. This will remove 
any kind of foreign material. It'll remove the cleaner. It'll neutralize the cleaner. And now we are ready to reapply thermal compound. With the processor and the heat sink now cleaned, now we can uh, start reassembling the computer. Here we have the processor here. Remember we have the arrow that's on the processor. It needs to match the orientation of the arrow on the processor for the socket. You just gently line them up. It doesn't take any force whatsoever. Once you line it up, the processor will automatically fall into the holes. Don't force it on there because you're liable to bend a uh, pin and they're a pain in the butt to try and straighten out. Now, once you have your processor in the slot or in the socket, remember the the lever. This is for the zip socket. You just take the lever, push it down, and then it locks. Now your processor is locked into the socket. Now we apply thermal compound to the metal plate of the processor. And it don't take very much. Now it takes a little dab because once you put uh, apply the heat sink and apply pressure, it will automatically smooth it out. Next, we need to take the, the heat sink. Remember you got the latch on one side and you got the lever on the other side. You want to gently set the heat sink on top of the processor. You want to take the latch, put it under, as you see there, and then this side here, we just need to apply it. Make sure you get them in the latch, like so, and then you take your lever, oh, it go on there, there we go. Now you gotta make sure, double check, make sure you got the latch on this side around the hook. And then this side, you got them two hooks on both ends, top to the bottom. And you just take it. There we go. It gets tricky because you have to be able to see over here whether or not you're catching the, la the latch over here on the end. And then you just take the lever once you get them all in place and then push it down. And you'll feel a lot of pressure behind it, which is normal. Now, when you check it, 
your CPU and your heat sink is tightly together. Now if you make a mistake it will be a hard thing to do because when you, once you make contact it presses all the air out and it creates like a vacuum between the processor's metal plate and the heat sink so it can be difficult to uh, separate the processor from the heat sink once you uh, make contact and you have it pressed in. But now you have your CPU back into place locked down with a new fresh of thermal compound. This concludes this video. I've shown you how to uh, remove the heat sink, remove the processor. Uh, you can use this technique if you want to upgrade your processor to a much faster one, but be sure that your motherboard can support the new processor. And keep in mind that it's always good to do this every so often, depending on how often your computer is on, to maintain the CPU's cooling efficiency. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.